Hello friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Sudoku Maniacs. Today we are going to see how to approach a jigsaw Sudoku, otherwise known, also known as an irregular Sudoku. Now the difference between a jigsaw Sudoku and a normal grid is that in a normal grid we have clear shapes of 3x3 three three boxes, right, with the 9 cells. However, in a jigsaw Sudoku, we have irregularly shaped boxes with nine cells as you can see on the screen so this can at times be very confusing for us as well but do not worry there are a few basic tips and techniques that we use which make these kind of puzzles very simple to crack so to begin with with the rules we have to fill the grid such that every row column and the irregular shaped bold outline boxes contain the digits 1 to 9 without any repetition. So this would be our row, this would be our column and these 5 cells, oh, sorry the 9 cells would be a box with the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. So how do we start? One option is we can always start by looking at singles. So for example, if I were to look at this cell, I can have, I cannot have one, I can have a two, not a three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These would be the pencil marks for this cell. But at times we may not uh, get all the digits. But when I look at these columns, when I look at this box, I can, the 9 cannot be in these 3. This 9 eliminates the 9 from here. And since we already have 4 givens, this would be a 9. Right? So as I said, we have to look for hidden and naked singles wherever we can. But we also have a very interesting technique here, which is known as the in and out technique. So, what exactly does that mean? What it means is, we draw imaginary lines across the grid, basically dividing it between rows or through columns, and we, this can be done anywhere. So, for example, let's draw an imaginary line after column 3. Alright? Now, this box is to the complete left of that imaginary line. But when we look at the first box, these two cells marked by small X's on the top right have gone out of that imaginary line into the right side. And similarly for this box which is at the bottom, this last box with another X at the top right has also moved out of that imaginary line. So in all we have the R9C4, R2C4 and R1C4 as the three cells which have moved out. But when we look closely we also see that three cells have moved inside the imaginary line. So basically R2C3, the basic region to which the cell belongs is to the right of the line. But R2C3 and R3C3 of from this box have moved inside that imaginary line and from this central box the cell R4C3 which has a 7 as a given has again moved inside the imaginary line. We will mark as you can notice these are marked by small circles on the top left. So now we see that apart from this imaginary line three cells have moved out and three cells have moved in. What this means is whatever digits that occur in the three cells that have moved outside this line will reappear in the three cells that have moved inside. So example, one of the cells that has moved out that contains a digit 2. So we know that 2 has to be part of the three cells that have moved in. We already have a 7 given and 2 is already given for this row. So the only place for a 2 would be this cell. 
and since 7 is one of the digits that has come inside that imaginary line and it should also occur as part of the cells which are outside that imaginary line. So 7 can only be in R1C4 or R9C4 and whatever digit comes in R2C3 will also reappear in either R1C4 or R9C4. Now for example let's take a look at what can be the possibility here which is 1, 2, 3 is over sorry 4 can come 5, 6, 7, 8 right so the possibility is 4 and 8 so I can have a 4, 8 here and here it will only be an 8 because I already have a 4 in the row 9 or the box whichever way you want to look at it so you see how we have eliminated the digit 3 from R1C4 because it does there is no 3 in the column or the row to be eliminated but using this in out rule we have eliminated 3 and since for column 4 3 cannot be here so the only place for 3 would be in these two and that's how you start minimizing the options that are available for a given step now this imaginary line can be drawn anywhere in the grid I can draw that line for the row so it's assuming I have drawn that line after row 4 All right so I know that these two cells have moved inside which is the top portion of that division and similarly 9 and this blank have moved in so we need to look for four cells that have moved outside the region and with the line being at row 4 the four cells would be this 9 and this so we know that whatever are the four digits 1 here here and this 9 will be these four digits clear now in this in out we have one more way this is about comparing what cells have gone out and what cells have come in and making sure that the same digits repeat in those set of cells but now let's draw a line imaginary line again these are you don't need to draw a physical line or an actual line on your paper you just have to visualize it so let's assume we have drawn a line after row 5 all right now when i look at it from this box one two three four cells i'll be marking these as x as at the top right corner to identify these four have come below them protruded to the lower portion from this box we have this one cell and from this box again we have one two three four cells so in all we see that we have nine cells that have come below the line whereas the primary box is above that imaginary when such a scenario arises when you have nine cells going outside your imaginary line then you can treat those nine cells as an extra region they will have all the digits one to nine without any repetition reason i'll explain to you how many rows do we see below that imaginary line four so basically when you have four rows it means you should have four sets of digits one to nine correct now this entire box this second entire box and this third box they are all below that imaginary line all right so we have accounted for three sets of one to nine and the fourth set of one to nine will be formed by these nine cells that have come inside the imaginary line so that's the logical explanation Keeping that in mind, we know 3, 5, 6, 7 are already there as part of that extra region. Alright? 1 cannot be in these two. 1 cannot be here. So this would be a 1 and a 1. If I have to account for the 1 to 9 in that extra region. Correct? Then 2 cannot be here. Again it cannot be here. So this would be a pair of 1 and 2. So now in that extra region, I have 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. So missing digits are 4, 8 and 9. With this 4, it cannot be here. 
cannot be here so this becomes a 4 this becomes a 8 and see how simple solving a irregular sudoku becomes when you use this in out technique all right always remember to use this in out technique it is very very helpful when you're solving a jigsaw sudoku then the other technique that we use is looking at this top box seven cannot be in these this is a seven it cannot be so our seven is locked here so for this irregular shape box seven cannot be here it cannot be here it cannot be here this is a one and a two so this becomes a seven correct four is not here four is not here four is not here so this becomes a four correct so the missing digits are again one two three right so this would be a one and three this would be a one two three so let's look for the fours four 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 this cannot be a four this cannot be a four so this has to be a four so we eliminate and since we had already got this eight we knew eight two seven so this would be a seven two eight right which makes this a six and a six all right so we have a pair of three six good enough now let's look at this box I have 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. So 2, 6 and 8 are missing. 2 and 6 are already present in the row. So this has to be an 8. This becomes a 2, 6. Because of which this becomes a 6, a 3 and a 6. So I eliminate that 3 and 2 also gets eliminated. So this is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 1. This becomes a 3. And to complete this row 3, I require a 7 and a 1. And this, so this column 7 also is completed. And here I require of 8 is the last digit for that row, and you have a 2 and a 4. Correct? That leaves me with 3 8, 3 8. This becomes a 2 8 and a 2 8. Right? So now in this box, I have a 1, 2, 3, 4 is not there, 5 is not there, 5 cannot be here, so this is 5, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. And here in this column I have 1, 2, 3 is missing, 4, 5, 3, 6 and 8. So 3, 6, 3, 6, 8, 3, 6, 8. Good enough. Now we've got the top box. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, so we just require one more 4 for a box, for this box. It cannot be in these two, not here, not here. This becomes a 4. And what would this be? 1 not possible, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is in the box, 7 and 8 in the column, so this has to be a 9. That leaves me with 1, 7. This becomes a 6 because 1, 6, 7 was missing and I had 1, 7 in that column. Right? Now, for this row, I had 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 were missing. So I have a 3, 5, so this becomes a 6, this becomes a 3, this becomes a 5, so this is my 6, 8. Right? So this was a 2, 3 and 6. So this again would be 3, 6 because of this 2, 2, 3, 6. And in this column, 1 and 3 was missing. Oh, we have a 1, this becomes a 3, this becomes a 1 because of which this is a 7 since it's part of the same box this is a 1 all right so this would be a 2 8 this also would be 2 8 because we have a 1 so this becomes my 1 and this is 2 3 8 2 8 2 3 8 2 3 8 this becomes a triplet so missing are 5 and 9 9 and 5 all right so with this Three, I can eliminate because we got it. Now look at this: two eight six eight two six. Again, we get a triplet of two six and eight. So this we can safely as put it as a seven eight two three eight two eight three seven 
and this would be 269963622888 and 6 and that is how a uh, regular sudoku is supposed to be solved how simple it became the moment we started using that in and out rule so if you think this was helpful please don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends and if you have not already subscribed do go ahead and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon once you click the bell icon you will obviously be notified of all the new contents that we will be publishing for you if you have a quick feedback or a suggestion for us please let us know through comments or the email and also there is an ongoing poll on the previous video that we have posted for you we give you the option to choose the puzzle that you would like to see next monday so if you have not already taken the poll please do go ahead and take it so till the next time Happy solving!